Well, hello and welcome to a currently pretty rare Smite video. I'm playing some Conquest and I'm playing as the god of music, Apollo. Or at least that's what he's labelled in Smite. He's the god of many, many things besides music. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't even tell you one of those things. Ancient Greek mythology is certainly not my hardest topic, but in this game, he, his persona, and all of his abilities are based on the tunes. And after failing to see his massive potential on release, I decided to practice with him a little more recently, trying to improve and get better with him, and this game I've taken a mid and I'm against Poseidon, and after clearing his wave I decided to get a few cheap shots in on him, you know, just to establish my dominance, make my mark, let him know who's boss, that kind of thing. Stay out of my territory, that sort of nonsense. And I can cut his wave down a lot faster than he can cut mine down at this early level, because needless to say my auto attacks are a lot stronger than his, and his whirlpool is not doing enough damage to my lane, and I am able to clear waves faster, and when he's overextended I can push up, Get a few basics in on him, cut his health down a bit, and harass him, and the idea is to just do this as much as I can, get last hits, get as much gold as I can, and then get a few shots on him, take his health down, to the point where I can just charge straight at him, knowing that I can just kill him there and then by unleashing a barrage of damage, every piece of burst that I have to offer right now, which is my dash, my auto attacks with a fully stacked passive, and my nuke, which is Apollo's one, or as he calls it, so beautiful, so beautiful it hurts. Yeah, that's cool. So at this point, I thought I'd messed up the whole process, and I thought I'd over-damaged him, thought it would make him go back, and he did toy with the idea, but he decides to stick around, and... Well, that's a bad idea, Poseidon, because I can dash through your wave, hit you a couple of times, and get you with the... Ah! <laughs> Shit! Ugh, free kill lost right there because I whiffed the nuke. Okay. Well, I don't think he'd be thinking twice about going back this time. He's just gonna back the fuck out. He ain't sticking around. He's gonna get all his health back. And that's a free kill lost because I can't aim for shit. Enemy. Well, it's no big deal, I guess. I'll just have to get him next time. Hopefully my aim will be a little more on point when the time comes. But for now, I'm gonna take the red buff, get a little more gold XP, and get some extra damage so that I can seal the deal on Poseidon a little easier next time. It is a little disappointing, of course, needless to say, but shit happens, you can't win them all, and you're gonna miss a few shots occasionally. But, at this point, I would like to go back, but there are minions to kill, and there's another wave incoming. Not only that, but Poseidon is back earlier than I expected him to be, so... I use my nuke to hit the archers and the guard at the same time. If you can, try and do that as often as possible. If you have to nuke the wave, try and catch the opponent in it at the same time. Harass him a little bit, kill two birds with one stone. I end up popping my health potion, trying to rely on death's toll to try and leech some health back, keep me sustained for the lane, put me back on an even playing field with Poseidon. Again, I nuke through the archers and hit Poseidon with it. It does a significant amount of damage, and now I have more health than he does after he arrived back when I was below half. So tables have turned back in my favor, and I am sitting pretty against this guy right now. It's not looking too dangerous unless he catches me with a particularly unexpected Kraken as I don't have my Aegis Amulet yet. And the Aegis Amulet is something I swear by, I buy it almost every single game, almost no matter who I play, particularly against Poseidon, I would love to be able to block the Kraken damage, but I have not been able to go back to spawn yet as I've been very, very busy in middle. <laughs> it's needed my attention as waves and waves keep coming, and it's very, very important that you be there for as many minions as you can, so that you can get as much gold and XP as you can to stay ahead and gain an advantage over your opponent. As I'm about to pop level 7 right now, whilst Poseidon remains level 6, because I had to force him back to spawn earlier and he had to miss out on a little bit of XP, as well as me grabbing the red buff during the interval so that I could push that advantage even further and keep us even further apart. And I wanted to dispatch it that wave as quickly as I could because I just want to get back to the shop and get my level 3 boots now. I've got the gold for it, and I should make it back to the lane with little to no XP lost at all. Particularly with Apollo's dash, Heppelmeo, and of course, level 3 boots, more speed. Shouldn't be a problem, and as I'm arriving back to the lane, you can see the minions are meeting up in the middle now, and I'm not going to miss an ounce of experience, and I'm also going to secure most of the last hits here get a lot of gold from it. Poseidon has backed, and the lane is empty. I say he's missing middle, but I also say that he's returned to base, so as to make sure my friendlies don't have to worry about him ganking, however. <laughs> I think that's the least of their worries right now, because at the quick check of the scoreboard, they're feeding pretty hard. I know I'm gonna have my work cut out for me. It's not looking too pretty in my side lane, so I'm gonna try and bully Poseidon as much as I can. I pick up a speed buff. Speed buff not only gonna help me get around the map faster, of course it makes you shoot faster now, as of a pretty recent patch within the last month or 
maybe two months ago. I'm not quite sure, but it's definitely one of the nicer additions for an AD carry, particularly the ranged guys who can just pepper people like this. I get a couple of shots on him there. He hits me with a tidal wave, and as we exchange a little bit of damage, my right lane goes down completely. <laughs> Both Fenrir and Ra die to Najar, who tower dove them, and the tower got a kill on Najar, so no XP or gold for Ra or Fenrir there, as it's pretty much just a nothing death to Najar as he gets a double kill. So, I know I'm going to have to be doing quite a bit of ganking this game. Apollo, fortunately, is a supreme ganker thanks to his amazing ultimate, uh, which lets him fly across the map to anywhere he pleases, should he have the mana sufficient to make him do so. However, I'm not going anywhere until I knock this Poseidon out of mid lane, because I just don't want to give up my mid tower just for the sake of one gank, because that's what's going to happen if I don't remove the threat. So I take down his wave. I figure I'm going to go aggressive on him. I pop my dash and my mares to get some shots. And then Bastet ganks me, so I figure all my escapes are down, I'm going to have to force my ultimates, and I see Hades coming in, so I go back down, and Poseidon gets nuked to death. No oh shit, I've got cats on me, I dash out. Hades ults Bastet, I miss the cats, I shoot Bastet, Hades gets the kill, cats are down, threat is gone, and I am stinging a bit from that one. Thank you, Hades, for a pretty lovely follow-up there, and a nicely timed ult when Bastet's jump was down, as she used it to pounce on my ass, and my ass is back and well, healing up the wounds, so I'm gonna head back out. As Hades kindly offers to hold middle lane for me whilst I'm away, and I take the opportunity to look at the jungle, I see that red buff just came up, blue is also up, and so is the gold harpy XP camp. So I'm gonna clear it out a little bit, and as I make my way to red buff, I see the minions clashing, I figure, you know what, why let that XP go to waste? Hades, you're a kind man, but I'm gonna have to share my own lane's XP with you. I hope you don't mind that too much. And once that's down, I go to pick up the red buff, and it doesn't look like Hades is going anyway. He seems to just want to chill mid. Maybe he got bored of Aphrodite and left lane. I'm not sure, because the side lanes, like I say, they're looking a little gruesome at this point, so I grab the red buff. More gold and XP. I'm level 10. I'm significantly ahead of my team, and I hope I'm significantly ahead of their team, and... Bastet is level 7. Yes, I think I am. She starts getting destroyed by me with the red buff, and I dash after her. Nuke her for a kill. Red buff, you are good. Thank you very, very much for the help. And right lane, dead again, but they're overextended. Now, I would have thought they would have gone back at this point, but Najar has a lot of health. Ares, you know, he's a tank. He could probably hold his own with half health for a little bit, so they stick around and try to pepper the tower for a little bit. Perfect opportunity for me to attack. I leave the minions alone. I decide to save the nuke for these two. I nuke Ares. Within one shot, he's getting away. Nope. Dash. One shot. Dead. Fenrir. Go get him, boy. Put him in the tower, and I'll shoot him. <laughs> that was quite a devastating omen, I have to say. But we clean up right lane. Ares and Najar are down, and I have a couple more kills to my name. I need to go back and spend my cash to finish my Executioner. That was a pretty nice gank on right. They were overextended, I feel I should have gone back. Although I don't blame them for thinking they could get away with the tower hit. Maybe they just didn't expect me to come quite so soon after killing Bastet in middle. And my ultimate was also down. It's now come back up, and I gotta go help on left lane now. Gank in side lanes for days. Ao Kuang, I'ma get you first. I'm gonna mez Bastet so she's out of the fight, and focus Ao Kuang while she's sleeping. Nuke him, dash back through Bastet, which kills her instantly. She's not having a good time in my presence. <laughs> so, perhaps it's a sign of things to come. My teammates are not having a fun time in their presence. Perhaps I'm gonna have to try and make it up for them this game. Well, I see in middle that my lane is still being held by not only Hades, but Ra is also there, chilling out in mid. I think he got bored of right lane. And I don't think I blame him after the beating he and Fenrir are taking from Ares and Najar. So I take the time to grab blue buff, and I figure I'm gonna need it with all the ganking I'm doing. And mid lane gets ganked by the Ares and the Jar, who actually come in to deal with their lost property. Ra, you went missing, bro, and they're coming to look for you. <laughs> well, I decide to focus on the Jar first. I figure he's the biggest threat of them all, as he's pretty fed from right lane. Dash after him to kill him. And now I've got to run from Ares. I mesmerize him so he can't fire another chain. Beat the Whirlpool. Poseidon does not catch with the tidal surge, and Fenrir picks up the Poseidon, and I didn't know which way to go, unfortunately, it's a bit of a wasted ult, as I couldn't get close enough to try and help kill Poseidon, it would have been a nice pickup, but I dash back through Bastet, who's coming behind me, knock her up, and she's caught in an awkward place, so she wants to kill some minions, but no, no, you're not killing minions, I'm gonna shoot you, 
That's enough for that, kitty cat. You ain't having a fun time. I miss the mares as Ares comes back to chain me, and I'm gonna have to Aegis on my tower as he dives me. I'm gonna go down, but I did buy Hades time to ult him in a nasty place. Ares goes down. A pretty good trade overall in my eyes from the initial gank in mid where I managed to pick up Najar, get the Bastet while she was out of position, and I did force Ares to suicide to get me killed, which I'm not too displeased with that. Hopefully, I'd like to think that this would be the turning point for my side lane teammates, and that now the enemies have died multiple times, they could start to pull it back. Mm. I guess we'll find out, but now that I'm dead, I managed to finish uh, my tier 3 Aegis Emma. I'm still getting used to these tiered actives as of the patch a couple of days ago, and I get a few more wards as I warded Gold Fury initially earlier, but I'm going to need a few more now. We're approaching the point where they're starting to gank from all sides, left and right. I'm going to need to light up the jungle a little more, get a little more vision to protect me from future Ares ganks, because they could very well kill me, <laughs> because Ares hurts. He stings like a beam. Ares, the god of fucking wasps. Anyway, back in mid lane now to clear it. Get him off my tower. I don't like the fact that it's getting shot down when I've really not been in any danger from this Poseidon, so to lose my first tower before he loses his would be quite disappointing to say the least, but it seems like we're back to normal now. I'm back in mid lane 1v1 with him, and I could have dashed in on him there before the whirlpool came out, done a bit more damage to him, but I don't want to overburst him to the point where he's not going to die, but he'd want to recall and reset his health, so just harass him a bit, get him down to the point where he's going to stick around, but put him in a place where if I choose to burst him, he'll die outright from it. And now I'm in a very awkward spot. You can see that Fenrir and Ra just died right lane, they're right up against our tower, and Hades is calling for a gank on left, yet I've got Poseidon half health in mid and I could kill him and he could take my tower if I leave the gank. So I end up just pressing 4, looking around, I think, fuck it, I'll go on Poseidon. Sorry Hades, I'm gonna have to get rid of this guy first. And I do burst him down enough to kill him, my initial harass, helping me get the overall job done. I didn't need to ulti him, I could have just played it cool and lane, but I pressed it due to all the pressure in every other lane. Now, left lane did not need any immediate help, so I ruled that one out. Right lane at the time, the enemies had left to grab buffs and were not pushing the tower, so that wasn't an immediate threat either. At that point, my best option was to stop wasting time, come down on Poseidon as hard as I could, and just kill him. And now everyone's back in their respective lanes, I can clear these harpies from the jungle, get a bit more gold and XP, before I make my way back to my own lane and clear the next wave for even more gold and XP. And you can see I keep on bringing this emphasis on grabbing as much of viable farm as you can, whether it's your lane's XP and gold, or whether it's going into the jungle and picking up buffs that, you know, warrant you picking them up. Like red buff is very suited to me, the speed buff, things like that. And as a result, look at my level compared to my teams and the enemy teams. I'm able to completely decimate this Ao Kuang just like that, because I'm making sure I get as far ahead as I can that it permits me to do things like that. Dive a tower and just shoot Ao Kuang a couple of times with a nuke and a few auto attacks. And as a result of it all, all the farming and all the ganking, I'm putting myself extremely far ahead. I'm 10 and 1 at this point. I'm significantly over leveled above everybody else. I'm pushing their towers. My mid lane is contained. And you can see that this tower's going down. Bastet isn't much of a concern to me. The tower's a few more shots. I'm going to go back in to finish it off in a couple of seconds. And there's two things that come to my attention right now. It's that my mid lane is pushed and my tower's getting attacked. I also see that. My ultimate just came back off cooldown, so I'm going to clear the wave, instantly ult, get up in the sky, and I'm going to go and get Poseidon out of my lane and protect my tower. Now, I don't think I can protect my tower in time, so I'm just going to punish this guy for taking what's mine. And I didn't really do that very well there, I mezzed him at a bad time, but despite my mesmerize not being timed well and me missing my ultimate a little bit, I did land every single auto attack, so they had its good and its bad points there, that little fight. I had good accuracy with my basic attacks, and that's extremely important with someone like Apollo, the ranged AD carry. That's where all your damage is going to come from, and you want to make the most of your stacked passive. Those fast shots are so good at bursting enemies down, it's important that you learn to land your attacks. And I gotta try and help right lane, because once again, Fenrir and Ra are dead, and the enemies are at the right tower. Hades and Aphrodite do decide to help this time, Najar goes in the sky, I turn my attention to Ares. As soon as he's back down, I go back on Najar, he's the big threat here. Ares gets too greedy, diving the tower for Aphrodite, the tower rewards me with the kill because I did the last hit of damage to him, and Hades finishes Najar as I'm caught in a tango with him. And we clean up right lane, and... 
I realized that Hades is doing pretty damn good, Aphrodite is doing okay, it's right lane who are really costing us here, and whenever I check the scoreboard at any point during this game, I see that Ra and Fenrir have no kills and a lot of deaths, so... It tells me that Najjar and Ares are the ones that I'm gonna have trouble with, and they're the ones that, despite my great advantage, they are the ones who are gonna be able to shut it down. So I'm gonna have to make sure that I kill Najjar as much as I can because I'm capable of doing so, and that Ares, who I may not be so capable of killing, he's... he's very scary. He's so tanky, yet he deals ridiculous damage. I'm gonna try and avoid fighting him by myself as often as I can, but... I'm gonna clear the wave here in left lane, Bastet retreat, she's not interested in fighting, understandably. So I'm gonna go back towards mid, but first I'm gonna grab this blue buff, because... Again, particularly with my ultimate and me having a gank a lot, blue buff is gonna be very useful in my hands, more so than it'll be in... perhaps a Ra or Fenrir, who could very well just die and feed it away, so... I take the blue buff, and I'm sure Aphrodite's not gonna complain, she has good mana sustain with her items. And I'm also gonna grab red buff, as I am doing the most damage. So again, another buff that'll be much more suitable in my hands than perhaps elsewhere. My old water gold fury expired, so I replace it with a new one. I see Bastet, pretty far forward killing minions, you know what? I'm gonna shoot you a few times, see how much damage you take. Yep, you're taking a lot of damage, I'm gonna die of you. I dash in after her, mez the cat, set up the shot, and nuke. Dead. Just like that. I'm significantly overleveled compared to she is right now. I'm level 19, and that is extremely high for this stage in the game. I'm, I'm very farmed and I'm very fed, and... I'm now going to take Poseidon's middle tower to make up for me losing mine. I see right lane's in a bit of a pickle. As soon as I take the tower, I'm going to ult over. Now, Alquang retreated. I figure he's recalling by this point, and he is recalling, and in hindsight, I could have stopped that. I thought he would have escaped before I'd have gone down. But, nonetheless, it's more important that I get these two, who are even more pushed up, and attacking my teammate. Now, this is a much more important cleanup, much better way for me to spend my ultimate. I get Najjar, he's the main danger, of course, and... He's getting healed by the Najjar passive, that expires, he now has to run, so he's just trying to kite in circles, juke my shots, and Aphrodite links up with me so we can start the chase. I'm shackled, he starts to run away, it's only a matter of time before my cooldowns come up, and you're gonna have to... You bastard! He blinked away from me. Well, I'm not giving up that easy, my friend, my dash is coming up soon. I dash forward and land with Aphrodite in the AoE, we both get sped up by it. Nuke, still not dead. I mez him, she stuns, I shoot a few times thinking that would have killed him, and I actually missed the shot. He's still trying to get away in Duke, and one final shot right at the end manages to kill him at long last. The behemoth has fallen, thank goodness. And now, Alquang ults me, I dash forward thinking I'd beat it, but no, it still hit me. I'm taking so much damage, getting knocked into a tornado, Aegis the Kraken, that is the biggest burst currently on offer, so I'm glad I saved it. And now, Hades cleans up with a pretty big ult on Poseidon, and on Bastet. Now, wasn't there one more? Where's that dragon gone? I see him in mid lane. Where the hell did he go? Jesus, he got out of there fast. It turns out he has Blink too. Well, shit, that dragon is gonna be pretty tough to catch with his slither and whatnot. I'll have to get him later, I guess, but for now, I'm just gonna go back because I have 3,000 gold after all that. Managed to get a lot done in that last run. We took two towers, I got three more kills to my name, and a bunch of assists from the team fights as well as a lot of general farm from the waves and the jungle. Lots and lots of gold coming in. So, I'm now level 20, and I've got a lot of items to my name. I'm at 12,000 gold right now, and I've managed to pick up a Deathbringer in full, which means I'm going to be absolutely executing the crap out of Bastet, Poseidon, and what I hope would be Al Kwang, that slithery bastard. And I can also deal with Najjar pretty fast too. But I see my Hades getting chased in mid right after Ra goes down yet again, unfortunately. And I ping for Hades to come towards me, because I might be able to help you out here, sir. He comes past me, I dash through the tornado straight into the Jars. Oh, we clashed. I'm pretty hurt, so I mez three people, and I start making my escape. Aphrodite links me for a bit more speed, heals me. I dodge a dragon, Hades unfortunately takes that hit for me. And I am just running and running for my life at this point. Ares blinks into me. So I dash, purify the pull, and uh, <laughs> I think I'm safe now. I think I'm home, but I see on the map, there's a bastard coming for me. She must be hungry for blood. Well, you know what? I bought a Deathbringer. Let's put it to work. Yeah. Three big, big hits. Thanks to Deathbringer and my nuke. She must have been one pissed off kitty cat to have to chase me past my damn phoenix at that level. Well, you know what? I'm afraid it didn't work. And I see Alquang escape, and I figure, you know what? You're not getting away this time, buddy. I'm ulting you, and 
As I'm chasing, I gotta lead the target, and where I land to lead, he starts recalling right before it. Are you kidding me? And he starts kiting me right back into the golem that is Ares, and you know what? I ain't fighting that. I mesmerize Ares to get him off my ass, and I start making my retreat once again. <laughs> but my team has made the advance, and I figure a team fight's about to break out, so I go back in, and then Ares and Poseidon start retreating from it. And they're hanging around the fire giant, taking their time, Alcon puts down a defensive tornado to zone us away, and it doesn't look like anything's about to happen, until Poseidon, the greedy bugger, decides to go and get red buff, leaving Ares all by himself, and with my newly purchased Titan's Bane, I can start cutting through his armor. Not so tanky anymore, my friend. Now I'm a little more confident that I can start approaching Ares and attacking him when I feel it might be worth it. And I was about to cut off Poseidon, and no, he's not that fast. He actually blinked, yes. Poseidon, Ares, and Alquang all have a blink to their name right now, so... There's a lot of escape mechanics where there shouldn't be some, and... Quite frankly, I don't like it, so... I decided now's a good time to go and pick up the red buff. And the red buff, again, very useful in my hands in particular at this point, as I'm extremely fed and I'm hitting particularly hard. This will certainly put the fear, if not a guaranteed death, in the enemies. So I go back to spawn, I figure I gotta do a little more shopping. I look at what my options are right now and I think... With all their escapes, I need to be dashing as much as I can. I figure Jotun's Wrath would be a nice pickup at this point, get some cooldown reduction and I decide to max out my purification beads so that I can avoid the Ares pulls or the Poseidon whirlpools. You get the idea, just I need to have that security as much as possible and keep myself alive. And I ult because I see Hades getting attacked as he's trying to grab a buff. His buff gets stolen and I didn't realize it was the underfed Bastet attacking him or else I would have probably would have just left Hades to deal with it by himself. I'm sure he would have been capable, but better to be safe than be sorry. And Ares starts attacking me again I use my Mesmerize whenever he shackles me, so that he can't throw out another chain instantly on me, and it gives me a chance to get away from him. Ares is my biggest fear at this point, and I'm quite happy to expend my Mesmerize to counter his shackles, as I feel that's what my greatest danger is. As he goes to the pole, I Aegis, not realizing that Aphrodite was linked to me, and I uh, do that multiple times this game. I take out Najjar with my Deathbringer. He's not quite as powerful as he thought. Poseidon, are you trying to get a sneaky flank on us? No, I'm going to you, Poseidon. You're my bitch now. <laughs> and I make quick work of him thanks to my big, big crits. <laughs> uh, Ares is going to run away. I'm not going to be able to finish him in time. Maybe I can cut off Ao Kuang? No, he blinks through my mesmerize. Mother... F well, anyway, I think that's about all I can do. I'm getting peppered by the tower and the minions, so I'm going to get out of there. Aphrodite's heals certainly doing me a solid here. She stuns the Bastet who's chasing me, and I'm able to escape. Or at least, I thought I was escaping. I don't think I'm done yet, though. This Bastet is overcommitting where she shouldn't be, and as a result, she's dead once again, thanks to my crits. Ares, let me recall, dude! Can you not just leave me alone? Well, look, I've got Ra's beams, I've got Aphrodite's doves. I'm quite happy to stick around, and I was lucky to have all of this support from both Ra and Aphrodite throughout that entire encounter, but that's not going to work every single time. I understand that. I'm not going to get that privilege the whole time, particularly as I'm not communicating with these players. This is just a solo queue, and they're going to want to heal other players occasionally if they have less health than I do. Understandable. I'm going to need to get some lifesteal soon. I do sell Death's Toll, because it's not really doing much for me at this point, and I could finish off my Jotun's Wrath if I did get the gold from doing so. and. The reason I ulted here, I'd love to tell you, but I have no idea. <laughs> Clicked it by accident, and it's an instant cast move. Total misclick. Try not to make that mistake. I flew towards the blue buff thinking, yep, I'm gonna need this bloody mana regen if <laughs> after this blown ultimate. But fortunately, I did buy Jotun's Wrath, so my cooldown isn't quite as harsh as I thought. And now a fight breaks out. Well, if I was still in the air, I could have crashed right down on him. Love to have my ult right now, but I have to make my way over on foot. Fenrir and Ra go down. Same old, same old. I come up behind whoever's there. It turns out to be Najjar and the slippery, slippery dragon. That is Al Kuang. He puts down a tornado. He also has a Magi's Blessing. I think, you know what? Fuck it. Al Kuang, you can go. I'll just get Najjar. Hades ults Najjar. Maybe not necessary, but no matter. He's dead. And I get smacked in the face by Spirit's Tempest, which is Al Kuang's big dragonish ult. And I'd lose a lot of health from that, and uh, am I going to have to go back to spawn again? Aphrodite decides she's going to tart me up a little bit with her lovely dovey lovebirds. <clears throat> and I'm going to grab the red buff because we're under no immediate threat. And this is on the enemy's side. If you can take the enemy's side buff camps, you're doing your team a favor. It gives you a very big advantage if you can steal the buff camps on the enemy's side of the map. 
And as I'm heading out towards mid, I see Poseidon, there's an Alcorn in the distance. My main concern is Ares, like I've said many times. I wonder where he could be. Oh my dear god, Ares blinks in the middle of us and pulls us all. I age us instinctively, of course, that's what you do. Despite Aphrodite being linked to me and using Undying Love to prevent any, <laughs> any pulls anyway. What can I say? Instinctive, and I've done it many times. Not the first time it's happened, and it won't be the last, I'm sure. But it's no big deal, because I have maximum tier beads and Aegis. The cooldowns are not as harsh as they were previously, before this patch. And now I can start working on a little bit of lifesteal, and with lifesteal, I'm never quite sure to whether I should get Soul Leader, or if I should get... I'll come back to it in a second, because I've currently got a very loud Hades laughing behind my back and making jokes. Okay, maybe he's not making jokes, but I dash past the XP camp, I'll get it later because my Ra's getting his ass kicked, so I mesmerize Poseidon, buy Ra some time to get away before I start shooting the crap out of the fish. And now he's gone down to my crits, Ares decides he don't want none of this. But anyways, back to lifesteal, when it comes to this point in the game, this late, getting Devourer's Gloves might not be recommended because... Obviously, it takes some time to build up the stacks. It's better to get it early game so that you can max it out faster. But Soul Leader is a little cheaper, gives you a nice aura, which is nice in team fights, And, of course, the attack speed synergizes nicely with Apollo's passive, helps you stack it faster. And a fight breaks out of the right, and he fetches it right to me! Good doggy. <laughs> and a boy. Hey, he fetches the kitty cat to me. And it took me a moment to realize it was a nice, tasty cat and dog fight. <laughs> How apt. Well, either way, I figure I'm gonna take my chances to try and push towards right Phoenix and force the enemies to show themselves, because I don't know what they are, and if the worst comes to the worst, I can, of course, use my ultimate to escape should I have to. But Aphrodite comes over, and I can't simply just ult away. And it turns out Ares and Najar come behind us, and I'm making a horrible mess of my auto-attacks here. I miss everything on Najar, almost. And there's a lot of enemies coming right now, so I can't just ult away and leave my pal here. I want to try and help her get away. Keeping us linked increases her speed, and she's going to get pulled away by Ares, Right into the danger zone, and I don't think you're getting out of there. Not much more I can do. She goes down, and now it's up to me to try and escape. And I see my team coming across from mid, so I figure I'm gonna ult, bait all of their bursty moves, and then I'm gonna fly around and come back down on them at a very, very opportune time. Because they are caught out in a nasty play seal. I'm waiting, and I come down on top of Hades' ultimate, crashing down on two people for maximum damage in a huge, huge fight. And this slippery bastard is surely not going to get away again, is he? Hades fears, I gotta try and mesmerize, but Ra's light breaks the effect, and he starts escaping again. Whirlpool holds us back. This dragon is a pain in the ass! I, can't, I physically can't kill him. And, quite frankly, I don't like it. Alright, doggy. Fetch again, come on! He goes to fetch the dragon to me! Yes, that's the way! Unfortunately, there's a big tornado in the way. If Fenrir goes down, I figure I don't want it to go away for nothing. I dash through a tornado and Alcorn escapes anyway, and I feel like shit. Ugh! What does it take to kill this guy? Well, I'm gonna go back anyway and finish my Soul Leader. Unfortunately, Fenrir is now a big 0 and 10 or something like that, and... Dragon is getting away again. What does it take to kill an Alquang with a speed buff, a slither, celebrity boots, and blink. Oh, and a Magi's blessing as well. I shan't forget that because that can avoid my mesmerize. That is one undying dragon. Bastet was chasing my low teammates and they just baited her right into me. She goes down after three crits. Dragon! There you are, I'm coming for you. You ain't getting away this time. I will ult you if that's what it takes, my friend. Poseidon, that whirlpool ain't doing shit to me, my friend. Dragon! That did not absorb his Magi's Blessing. I swear to God, that thing is bugged to hell. Ugh. He gets away again with a slither of hell. What does it take? Well, you know what? I figure I'm just gonna grab the Gold Fury, because, you know, I have lifesteal now. Why not? It's not like is gonna come and fight me. <laughs> Christ, he'll probably look at me and just slither in the opposite direction the moment he sees me. Well, I don't blame him. You're the dragon. That's what you're supposed to do with a dragon. So, we get the Gold Fury, and that puts us an even larger lead. I really don't have much to spend my gold on at this point. Full on items, full on actives, and I'm just waiting until I can afford an elixir of power, I guess. I ping on the map to show that there are many, many enemies incoming. Ares starts chaining Poseidon, starts whirlpooling. Najar and I are doing a little dance. He latches onto me and stuns me. He starts to do his flaming spear. I figure I'll mesmerize him and back off a little bit. He ults me with one shot left in him. You, sir, are just delaying the inevitable. As we crash down, I instantly nuke him to kill him. Ares, again, my titan's bane and my deathbringer. I'm just cutting through you nice and easy now, my friend. 
Tornadoes cuss me off from him, but Fenrir and Hades clean him up. And a dragon! A dragon! I swear I saw a dragon. I mesmerized the get on his better side, and this is the last time you'll ever try and escape from me, my friend. Oh, Christ, that feels good to get rid of Alcorn once and for all. Like Aegis Bastet's cats, she must be livid right now. Well, a life steal from the cats a little. I've got the doves healing me. I'm starting to regen, and Bastet, you are in an awkward spot right now. Because we got the big bad wolf coming in from behind. He pounces, he mauls her, he doesn't really do a lot of damage, and he's right at their phoenix, and... Yeah, he's going to be 0-11. Oh, boy. I mean, I thought the Bastet was having a tough game, but Fenrir... Fenrir is having a rough, rough time. Well, we've come this far, and I'm healing up a lot from the Doves and Ra's Solar Blessing. It's only Bastet living right now, and there's a huge delay before the others come up after that team fight. We have to get this left Phoenix. Shouldn't be a problem, Bastet's not going to deal with our minions. If she steps out here, she dies. Phoenix goes down, I dash through her, knock her up, and I wait for her to jump back over. Right into my arms. Come here, my darling. Down you go. And Hades pings that we should get the middle phoenix. I think it's a good idea, I agree. Minions are pushed up, we may as well. We take middle phoenix. Dove's still healing me up. I'm back to full health now, thanks to all the support from Aphrodite and my general life still from Soul Leader. Hades offers to tank the right phoenix, I think. Yes, that's a good idea. You have a lot of health. Let's get them down and handicapped before they all come up. They're starting to respawn now, but we are safe to take down all three phoenixes and set ourselves up for what should be a guaranteed victory. And I toy with the idea of going back to spawn, but I'm back up to full health and I haven't really got anything else to spend my money on at this point. I haven't got enough for elixir just yet. I might as well just stick around, maybe kill a few more, maybe even take the Minotaur right now, who knows. And we do indeed start making our move on the Minotaur. I clear out a few minions before I head inside the chamber. Poseidon starts coming out, and if I had a little better accuracy, I might have been able to do a little more crit damage to him. Maybe even kill him before he go back to the fountain, but no big deal. I pull the Minotaur out. And I want to get him into our minions, rather than smacking our gods down. I'd rather we didn't decide because of a minotaur. And oh my Aegis amulet, please save me from the Kraken, the Whirlpool, and the Spirit's Bleeding Tempest. I get a finishing blow on Poseidon and Alquang. Trying to escape, trying to slither back to spawn safely to regen hell. Nope, you've escaped enough times this game, my friend. And you know what? I don't feel like getting clubbed to death by a minotaur and a jar. I'm just going to walt out. I'm out of here. Out to safety, and I alter was their speed buff. I figure it's game over by this point, but it's never a bad time to take the speed buff. And after I grab this, that was a good time to head back to spawn, regen my health, regen my mana, <laughs> buy an elixir of power. <laughs> yes, we did come that far, despite the new actives costing us a little more. We did accumulate enough gold to warrant us getting this enormous damage buff, and I figure, you know what, just make it overkill, why not? Let's get the fire giant. <laughs> You think they're going to contest this with all three lanes of fire minions pushing on their Minotaur? I've got wards, but I don't think we've got anything to worry about. So I head to Fire Giants, and I figure, let's let's make this interesting. I'm going to make it a race, because I'm looking at their Minotaur's health, and I don't think they can cope with all the minions. I'm going to see if we can kill the Fire Giant before the Minotaur goes down. So I start peppering it, and my lifesteal ensures that I'm not going to be in any danger of dying. If I do, I'll just walk outside and Hades can tank it, but... Nah, this ain't gonna be a problem. So, I'm not looking at the fire giant right now, I'm looking at the minotaur. That thing is just a blinking silhouette of nothing right now. Probably on about 4 HP or something like that. And now I am in a hurry. I want to get one more, I want to make it 30 kills. As so I start dashing forward, but it's to no avail. That's a concluded game right there. The minotaur goes down to all the minions. And that's probably the best score I've ever had on Smite. And I think it had to be, given Fenrir and Ra's combined 0-21. <laughs> Well, some games are just fun like that, I guess. That's Apollo, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I need a drink. So, goodbye for now.